Hey, Bruce. So I'm noticing there's not a lot of Star Trek news lately, and I think that's because there's not a lot of news anywhere, with the exception, of course, of the current situation the world's grappling with. Uh, I did notice one news story, but uh, we'll get to that. Uh, have you been noticing that? There's just not a lot of Star Trek talk going on. Um, well, there's Star Trek talk in the, d- definitely the forums and on social media, but as for That's news, true. yeah, for news, there's not. I mean, it's so low in the news category to the point that like one of the biggest news items I could find was that we're getting new Discovery Funko Pop figures, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely interested in those Funko Pop characters, so I'm glad you brought that up. Welcome, everyone. This is Positively Trek. I'm Dan Gunther, and with me, of course, is... Brucey baby. I'm sorry, Bruce Gibson. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah, we're here to bring a little bit of positivity into your life right now and talk about Star Trek. So yeah, like I said, not a lot of news items except for one piece of potentially uh, bad news, I guess, uh, from Jeff Russo, the composer of the music in Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard. And those of you who are wondering about delays with regards to Star Trek Discovery because of COVID-19, it looks like our worries about that go beyond just the fact that the people doing post-production and visual effects are working from home. We've got a recent interview from TrekMovie.com with Jeff Russo talking about the work that still needs to be done for the music for Star Trek Discovery. So... Uh, It looks like that delay might be more significant than we had hoped it would be. I guess so. I mean, I didn't even think about the music aspect because when we talked about this before, it was about post-production in the terms of adding special effects. So we thought, oh, Uh well, a lot of people are working from home. They can still work on it. It may delay it slightly. But yeah, when you're composing new music with an orchestra, multiple people in the room have to do that then you can't go and do that because nobody should be in the same room like that in big groups unless, and I don't think they're going to go this far, unless you put them all into separate booths in different locations and pipe all the the different music uh, instrument sounds coming in and blend it together. But yeah, that could that could affect this still slightly, not a huge delay, but I, it would delay it, and which is a good thing that they probably haven't given us a date because they gave us a date and it moved it would just feel more disappointing. We just know it's in 2020 and I'm sticking with the whole sometime this year we're going to get it. Yeah, I hope so too, for sure. Here's the uh, actual answer from Jeff Russo. He was asked on this uh, trekmovie.com interview about the logistics of recording the music in light of the fact that uh, California is locked down currently. So there's a stay at home order and uh, shelter in place for California. So uh, here's his answer. He says, I am writing the scores for the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth episodes. We're full speed ahead. They wrapped production like six weeks ago, maybe even longer. I am not working at my studio. I am working out of my home because of the lockdown where I am writing for the episodes as they come in. What it means for my ability to record with an orchestra, I can't do it right now, but the moment that they let me, I will. So... Yeah, until that lockdown is lifted, it sounds like that might be on hold, unfortunately. Or maybe they just released the episodes without any music. There you go. (laughs) Or maybe Jeff Russo is just humming his themes in the background. (laughs) See, now I've seen online people, a few people saying like, oh, they should just release it with like um, lifted music from other episodes that would fit with those episodes. And I personally hope they don't do that. I would want them to take their time and make a good finished product. I don't want anything rushed. Uh, But I I definitely understand that impulse from some people because, you know, it's going to be tough without Star Trek now that we've had 10 weeks of Picard to kind of go from that to no new Star Trek. Uh, So, you know, take out the Star Trek novels and load up Netflix and CBS All Access with the past episodes because, yeah, we (laughs) will have to do that to have Star Trek to comfort us in this time. Yeah, I wouldn't want them to reposition music that's already been pre-recorded in other episodes and just try to make it fit in. It it could possibly work, but... We're just got we're not getting any new themes and we're in a different time period and different probably aliens and such. It's like, yeah, I'd rather get it right. I mean, honestly, if I had to wait a year to get it right, it would kill me, but I'd rather have it like <laughs> done right than just kind of a 
half whatever job. Yeah, definitely agreed with that. Well, with the knowledge that Star Trek Discovery might be coming a little later than we'd hoped, let's uh, go back and talk a little bit more about Star Trek Picard. And specifically, Bruce, you had a really great idea for what we could talk about with this episode. And I think it's a great subject. There's been this uh, debate kind of forming online about the events of the final episode of Picard. So let this serve as your spoiler warning here for people listening to this episode. This is current up to the final episode of season one of Picard at In Arcadia Ego Part 2. If you haven't watched that episode, we are going to be dealing with spoilers from that show. So, Bruce, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, former Captain Jean-Luc Picard, former Admiral Jean-Luc Picard, what is he now? Is he human? Is he still the same person that we knew before? Or is he something different? I think this could be a really fun thing to talk about. Yeah, I'm still trying to get over the fact that you said I had a good idea. But that being said, (laughs) I would say he, technically, he's not human. I would not categorize him as a human at this point. But I do think it's still Picard, which is kind of odd to say he's still Picard, but he's not human. Well, Picard was human. So if he's still that, if he's still Picard, wouldn't he still be human? I I mean, that's like saying is Data human, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. physically, they're both androids. And Soji is too. Would you say Soji is human? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, that's one of the things that they said in Picard that they were designed to be kind of indistinguishable from humans. But imitation isn't the same thing as the real deal, is it? No. And I mean, I'm just thinking if you uploaded Picard's consciousness, his memories, his mind into something that didn't look human, you know... I don't even know if we would say he was human because he wouldn't look human, but it's still the same consciousness. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's the the real meat of this that I want to get down to, the consciousness of Picard. So regardless of whether this current body is a human body or something else, the consciousness, if there is such a thing that resides within it, is that Jean-Luc Picard, as we've known him, through seven seasons of TNG and the films, is this the same person? Oh, the answer to that, in my opinion, is yes. It's the same person. Okay, I I, I, I thought a, bit, a little bit about this before we started the podcast, so I'm just thinking, imagine, and I'm going to, I know nobody can see me, but, you know, I have to do visual stuff. So, imagine, okay, I'm going to grab a book, and the book I'm grabbing is Star Trek Mirrored Universes, Infinity's Prism. I just started reading some of these short stories in here. But the book is a paper book. All the contents of the book, that's what makes the book. It's not the cover. It's just part of it. If I removed the cover and took the contents on all the pages of this book and put it into a totally different cover, would the book no longer be Mirrored Universes? I mean, I, I, I think it would still be the same book. It's, it's kind of an almost ship of Theseus argument you're making here. Uh, yeah. which is, you know, a little different, but but kind of along the same lines. It's an interesting thought. Here, Here's another kind of wrinkle to that then, though, is you've got that hardcover or that softcover copy of it, the physical copy, the ebook version of that. Mm-hmm. Is that the same book? It's not a different book, right? <laughs> I mean, if you read the Bible as a physical book, it's the Bible. If you read an ebook of the Bible, you wouldn't say, well, this one isn't really the Bible. This is an mm-hmm. ebook of the Bible. No, it's still the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's the contents of that. It's what makes it the Bible. It's what makes it the Star Trek book. And what makes Picard who he is, isn't just because, oh, he's a man that's standing in front of you. What makes Picard who Picard is is that consciousness, that personality, the way he thinks, it's his mind. That's Picard to you. When you think of Picard, you're thinking of the man of who he is, not just what he looks like. So then this is the next little wrinkle in this as well, because we, we talked about ebooks and paper books, which are kind of copies of each other. So is this new Picard the same Picard or just a copy of the old Picard? And 
you know, I, I, I'm not even sure of that phrasing, just a copy. Like if you copy everything exactly molecule by molecule, whatever it is that makes up someone's consciousness, is that the same person or something inferior, something lesser? <laughs> I feel like we need to invite the guys from Metatrex over for this <laughs> one. This is getting deep. Well, no, I mean, and I, everything I'm saying, I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm, I'm thinking through this as you're asking me, and I may change my opinion as we go through this, but even if it's a copy, I feel like it's still the same person. And let, let's just pretend for a moment that Picard uh, came through a transporter and doubled and two Picards are standing there. I mean, well, let's even back up. We have a situation like this, for example, with Thomas Riker. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. So we have <laughs> Will Riker and Thomas, Thomas Riker. And I would say at the moment of separation, they're still the same person, but now they travel in totally different directions. And now they become different people over time because mm. they're not, the same but <laughs> i know this is a little crazy but you could also say well picard is now in this android body and from here on out he's not going to be the same because he's going to have different experiences and stuff and i guess the i guess my point is that uh, i don't know i i would say for example going back to the rikers they're still the same rikers just with different experiences it's almost like different universes too I i'm glad you bring that up i'm glad you brought up the Rikers, Thomas and Will Riker. Uh, and, and as a little aside, there's something about that episode that always bugged me. And I'm just going to get this off my chest right now. At the moment they're separated, they're the same person. Riker that we know that continues on beams up to the Potemkin and the other Riker stays behind on Nirvala four and is stuck there because nobody knows he's there for one thing. The Riker that went back up to the Potemkin gets a promotion for his heroism in uh, rescuing the colonists from this planet. The Riker that stays there, stays there for however many years it is until the Enterprise discovers him and rescues him. That Riker doesn't get that same promotion. <laughs> he totally should. He stays a lieutenant. But he not only did the exact same thing that the other Riker did because they were the same person up to that moment. On top of that, he was trapped on this planet for years afterwards as a thank you for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm mad on behalf of Thomas Riker. And frankly, I'm shocked he didn't do worse than go and join the Maquis because that is some not fair treatment. But worse word I was going to use there, but I'm not going to to maintain our non-explicit rating on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> now I want to go watch that episode again. Uh, as soon as we're done. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, that's just a total aside. Yeah, that's a little side note. But so you said you're glad I brought up the Rikers. And why is that? Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, I think that's a that's a really good analogy for what's going on here. In that case, we do consider those two people to be two separate people because one continues on while the other one also continues on and has different experiences. So at that point, they are two different people. When they meet up years later, those differences are apparent. They have different attitudes toward life, for example. Thomas Riker takes on that name and says, you know, you know, I'm going to take on that name Thomas. And Will Riker says, oh, I always hated that name. So, you know, there's all these little differences that are becoming apparent. In this case, though, I think the same consciousness continues on from Picard, who whose body dies, he dies, that consciousness is loaded into a computer and then transferred over to this new body and continues on from there. So there's just kind of one path where it goes. So I think that would be in support of this being the same person and not two different people. Okay, so what if there were two golems? Picard's mind was downloaded into two, and now we have two Picard androids which one is picard or are they both picard or neither one picard oh that now now you're getting interesting here so i think at the moment they are created the moment they're activated i guess they would be both picard at that moment but their experiences would diverge from there so i don't think either one would have a superior claim over the other it would just be kind of Picard A and B. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question, though. I hadn't thought I hadn't considered that. I guess where I'm kind of leaning towards now is that 
uh, this is so tough. Why do we do these philosophical things? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to say that this Golem Picard is not the same Picard. Oh, okay. Not the same Picard, but still is Picard. Mm -hmm. And so in the question I ask you, if we had two Gollum Picards, are they Picards? I would say the answer is yes. They are both Picards, but not the same Picards. So now there's three. There's the original and the two copies. Right. The original died and you have the two copies. They're all still Picard. I guess what I'm getting at is, again, if going back to a book analogy, if I print the Bible multiple times, they're all the Bible. There's not just one Bible. There is one Bible, but then there's multiple printed versions of the Bible. So there's like different versions of the same person is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. The person is still the person, just different versions. So here's here, let me throw this to you in their science fiction Star Trek world. If you go back in time, if I if I had a time machine and I go back in time or do a slingshot around the sun and I go back, Dan, to when you were seven years old. And I change the direction of your life. Are you the same Dan? Or are you a different Dan? Are you still Dan Gunther? Your life experiences are different now. That is a really good question because, yeah, there's a number of different ways to approach that. So, I mean, fundamentally, I don't think I would be the same person because a person is the sum of their biology and their experiences, right? Everything that I've experienced has made me the person I am today. So that would be significantly changed if my life were put on a completely different direction. My question is, what about my consciousness, my awareness of who I am? And this is something that's really hard to quantify, really hard to think about in scientific terms, because each of us is only aware of our own consciousness, I don't actually know that everyone else in the world is a real thinking person because I can't see inside your head. I can't, you know, I can only see inside my own head and realize that, that what I'm experiencing is what I'm experiencing. And, and you know what I mean? I, it's kind of hard to quantify and hard to discuss. So the question is, would my consciousness still be me? Would I still experience that in the same way if my life had been significantly changed? I think that I would. I don't have any scientific basis to say yes or no. And then, so then the question becomes, is Picard, does Picard have that same objective, subjective, whatever you want to say, experience as himself? When he closes his eyes when he dies and then finds himself in the simulation and then opens his eyes as the golem, is the same entity, is the same consciousness experiencing that? Or is it something else now? That I don't know. I think it is. My, my gut would say the story they're trying to tell, I think that is the case, but I don't know. Well, and I guess that's going to where eventually where I wanted to reach is that we're talking about what our perceptions of something is, but what is the perception of the individual? Does Picard consider himself the same Picard? Right. Or is there just something there that thinks it's Picard, but isn't the original consciousness, whatever that would mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then what does Starfleet consider? I mean, if Picard walks, and I know he's not part of Starfleet anymore, but if he walks into Starfleet headquarters, are they going to recognize him as being Picard? Or they're going to say, no, you are not the Picard. We're not even going to meet with you. No, that's a good question. Like, legally, what is he considered? So I, I'm assuming they <laughs> they took Picard's wallet out of his pocket on his human body and put it in the pocket of his golem body and it's got his little id and everything in there you know is that legally binding is he actually able to claim the identity of jean-luc picard at this point given what the story again the story they're trying to tell i think so but that would be it'd be interesting to see a measure of the man measure of a man type episode dealing with this question Oh, I was just thinking even more so than that. I think the whole season, it should be a, a storyline for the whole next season of him mm -hmm. trying to deal with and trying to come to terms and, and other people in the galaxy come to terms. Is he the real Picard or not? Because like you're saying, like legally, would they 
recognize him as being the same person. But going back to what I was saying, well, if you created two of them, how can you legally, which one, you can't have them both legally be Jean-Luc Picard. You know, and I was thinking earlier today, if he was married, and by the way, we don't know, he could be married. We've just never heard about his wife. I mean, maybe maybe it's Beverly or somebody else and he's just separated or whatever. But let's say Picard is married. Who, you know, who's his wife married? Like, would is he still married? Would the his wife still consider him her husband? I don't know. I it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's definitely interesting. So to me, and we we haven't talked about this yet, but I think there's a, a very direct parallel in Star Trek history to this, and and that would be Spock in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. The body that Spock's Katra is in, which was copied over to McCoy before Spock died. So, you know, maybe even more so than Picard, because Picard's was copied over at the moment of his death. Spock's was copied over a few minutes before he died, when he mind-melded with McCoy. So, you know, anyway, getting past that... It's then put into a new body. The body in Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock is not Spock's original body. It was it was regenerated by the Genesis effect. It you know grew from I guess cells into a baby into you know it's a totally brand new body, much like Picard's is. And I think there's a lot of parallels here because Picard's new body, while it's synthetic, is still biological. We've been shown that the bodies that they create aren't you know mechanical with blinky lights like data's they are for all intents and purposes fairly indistinguishable from humanoid bodies i believe uh so you know this has happened before and we definitely i think most people anyway consider spock after star trek 3 to be the same spock as he was before so is is that warranted? Maybe they should be considered two separate Spocks. Yeah, and maybe it doesn't have to be all black and white, you know? I mean, mm. Kirk and Spock are two separate individuals. Spock, though, when he dies and then is resurrected, maybe isn't the same exact Spock, but he's still Spock. It's almost like there's... I, I was just thinking, for example, like my iPhone. It always gets, like, some kind of software upgrade, which changes something about the version of it. And so, you know, when I change the software, if I had two iPhones and one is on one upgrade and one's on the other, they're still iPhones, but yet they're different. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's so it's so confusing. I keep going to the direction of they're not the same, but they are the same person. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm going to like there's a lot of differences you know the the new picard's brain doesn't have the defect that was causing his issue in his previous body i also assume he does not have a titanium metal heart anymore i'm assuming it's right. a biological heart it's still artificial because his entire body you could say is artificial now so like i feel like there are a number of differences there so yeah it's not the same picard but from his subjective experience, I think he is the same person, if that right. makes sense. Yes, I, it does make sense. But it's <laughs> so weird because uh, it's just it's weird because I keep going back to the well, if you made two of them or three of them or four of them. I mean, for example, I was just thinking a little while ago about data. Data downloads his memories and stuff into B4. Mm -hmm. Now, if they had taken that and found a way to make it work in B4, like they did in the Countdown comic to Star Trek 09, B4 became Data. He was known as Captain Data. Yeah. So he wasn't B4, he was now Data. But it's not the same Data, but it has Data's memories. But what if you took Data's memories and put it into several Data androids and they all look the same? Are they all Data? I mean, they, they all have the memories and the experiences of data, 
But yeah, they're all going to have different experiences and do different things. They all can't be data. So it's, it's almost like because of that, I want to say the next evolution of somebody is maybe the same person, but still not the same person. Mm hmm. I, and but and then also goes back to again like I'm saying you know like when you were seven years old you're a different person now than you were when you were seven absolutely in, in every conceivable notion like every cell in my body has been replaced since then are you the same Dan Gunther <laughs> I think so I don't know do I yeah I mean I think I have the same subjective experience from that moment up to now I think I do but. There's a case that, you know, I might have just woken up this morning out of bed, not the same person that went to bed, but just like a new person with all of the memories of the previous Dan Gunther loaded into my head, ready to go. You know, there's no way to scientifically prove that I am the same person. I could be just an entity that thinks he's the same person who's experienced all these, you know, 37 years of life up to this point. I might not be. Well, which goes back to the Rikers. It's like you have two Rikers, but they have different experiences, but they still consider themselves Will Riker. Even Mm -hmm. though one's gone by Thomas to avoid confusion, they still think they are Will Riker because they both really are. Yeah, not neither of them would have a better claim on that life than the other. Right. So I guess you can have more than one person. It's just I don't know how legally, like you're saying, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. It gets, yeah, it does. It gets confusing. It gets back to those whole conversations that I've heard too about transporters. You know, you mm-hmm. practically are died and re-put and put back together again in a transporter. So are you still the same person that beamed up from the planet to the ship? Yeah. And, and you could even extend that argument. And I've seen this done in a number of uh, YouTube videos that people have done online and, and philosophical debates. You could even extend that to say, every time you go to bed, there's a break in your consciousness when you fall asleep. Are you the same person when you wake up the next morning, even like, yeah, we don't know. (laughs) And I love that science fiction exists for us to discuss these issues, because I think this is a really fun discussion and I'm not, necessarily saying well i'm right and he's absolutely the same person and someone who says differently is wrong i think there's a lot of nuance in that discussion and i love that some of this has been brought out i I also want to bring up memory alpha kind of has gone through this a little bit when one of their users created a separate page for the picard golem saying jean-luc picard died in this most recent episode and then they created a new page for the Picard golem going forward. And that ignited this huge debate in the background on the discussion pages for those articles saying like, should this be two separate pages? Should they be merged back into one? What is a person? What is consciousness? I love that. It's a wiki page that these big, huge ideas get discussed on. Yeah. And I think the right decision is to have the golem Picard as the Picard as one mm-hmm. page. I think they should be together. And just going back to like what you're saying about Spock. And of course we can talk about O'Brien. We can talk about Harry Kim. We can talk. Yeah. Like we could go on like from different universes and they replace the other. And I mean, it's just, it does get all a bit confusing, <laughs> but yeah. then again, we don't really deal with this in real life. We're not at least not yet. These situations don't exist. And it would be interesting how, in the future, when we do get to that point, how things are treated, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, if my memories were moved into an Android and my body was killed off, would my wife welcome me into the home as an Android? I think she would, but I'm still not the exact same person, but I still am. But then are we still legally married because I did die? <laughs> you know, there's a death <laughs> certificate or do we have to remarry? reapply start all over again can i go to work or do i have to reapply for my job yeah (laughs) it's pretty crazy i should say that the memory alpha debate was settled and they have merged those two pages back into one page which is jean-luc picard so you know there's still some arguments being waged on there but i think it seems that they've settled on where they fall on this issue But uh, I think there's definitely more fun discussion to be had on this. 
And I think I'm going to open it up to our listeners as well. We haven't done a to poll in a little while. So I think I'm going to put one up on our Twitter (laughs) at Positively Trek. And yeah, is Jean-Luc Picard the same person after the events of this latest episode? And I'll find a way to word it to kind of take in some of the nuance that we've talked about here. But yeah, I'm curious what you guys think. So yeah, check that out at Positively Trek on Twitter. Find that to poll. I'll make sure to have that on there. And uh, c- let's continue the discussion in the the reply tweets to that, because I think this is a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm curious to see how you even come up with a question, because <laughs> as, as you just said, is he the same person? I almost feel like I would say no. But if the question is, is he still Picard? I'd say yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know? It depends how you'd you know, how the question is asked or how you look at it. And I guess that's what I'm leaning toward. I think that's my final answer in this edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. That is that it's it's not the same person, but it's still Picard. Well, like I said, you can reach out to us at Positively Trek if you have uh, an idea on this question or anything else that you want us to talk about. We've also got an email address, PositivelyTrek at gmail.com. Feel free to drop us a note there and search Positively Trek on Facebook. We have a discussion group where I'm sure we'll be talking about this for some time to come in there as well. And you can find me on Twitter at Kurtrats, K-E-R-T-R-A-T-S, and on YouTube.com slash Kurtrats Productions. And Bruce, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Admiral underscore Rex. And that's where I'll be. Excellent. Well, thank you all so much for joining us and listening to us today while we brought, I think, an interesting Star Trek discussion into your lives and catch us in the next episode. We'll see you then. Mm-hmm.